I truly believe that we're sort of on a cusp of a, a new industrial revolution in the United States, especially as it pertains to advanced manufacturing. And nobody could be more excited about this than, than we at RIT, uh, because it's really, it's in our DNA, it's our roots. And it really was to support all of the economic development that was going on in this region. And it's, part of the reason uh, why Rochester became such uh, an international manufacturing hub. The Obama administration, of course, came out with this, this new idea to reinvigorate manufacturing in the U.S., uh, commonly referred to as NNMIs, right, the National Network of Manufacturing uh, Innovation. So far, they've, they've named nine of these uh, new institutes, and there'll be more to come. We at RIT are extraordinarily proud that we are already on five of the winning teams. One of the reasons we're able to play such an important role in this sort of manufacturing revolution is because we're so well positioned. We've already got the programs and the expertise in the areas that are now uh, so uh, relevant. The Amprint Center is uh, focused on 3D printing research, specifically developing the next generation of 3D printing materials and processes and, and applications that use it. The Rochester region has decades of experience, uh, industry experience with Xerox and Kodak and others. We're perfectly positioned to transition from document and photograph, uh, photographic printing into 3D printing. 3D printing is just 2D printing done over and over and over again. 3D printing 2.0, in my mind, is when we get into multifunctional printing or printing with multiple materials that can do different types of things to make parts that, Frank, we can't even dream today of, of what they'll be, but when the capabilities emerge, the, the ideas will follow. The concept of SIMS was developed in 1992. We started as a center at RIT that was very unique. We had a major focus on applied research. We had a major focus on solving real problems. Uh, now we see the challenging shifting to uh, cleaner energy manufacturing, to manufacturing with lower footprint, uh, to uh, material availability to ensure that we continue to make product uh, in, in light of all that increased demand, increased uh, material consumption. Uh, in 2007, we created the Galsano Suit for Sustainability at RIT, and there's a first uh, program uh, in, the, in the country that offer a PhD degree in sustainable manufacturing, sustainable production. We're very uh, involved with two uh, national initiatives uh, called the National Network for Manufacturing Innovation and NNMI. One of them is focused on digital manufacturing. The second one is focused on smart manufacturing. We need to figure out a way to ensure that we can continue to sustain our production at the levels that needed uh, in a way that will be sustainable, that will be able to uh, uh, not have a huge footprint. AIM Photonics is about uh, revolutionizing how we deal with uh, information by using light to process it. It's very hard to move data around within a chip because all those electrical wires are just literally heating up. We need to overcome that by replacing all of those really energy hungry electrical wires on uh, our microchips with photonic waveguides. So what we're doing here at RIT is coming up with really novel solutions to do that very quickly, efficiently, uh, so that the cost can be brought down in terms of the packaging. And here at RIT, we have really great resources for doing that. One of them is uh, downstairs from me, which is uh, SMFL, where we are actually able to uh, engineer these chips so they can be connected to fibers. And then uh, across the campus over in CAS is the SEMA lab where we have an entire packaging facility where we can then actually put those fibers onto the chips. AIM Photonics is all about providing that gap from research in this lab to uh, providing an ecosystem where these uh, photonic devices can be manufactured. The mission of the Center for Detectors is to develop detectors 
that will have the biggest impact on the world. So for us, that means developing detectors that will end up being in very advanced scientific systems, like on space telescopes or Earth remote sensing platforms. So RIT traditionally has operated in the highest TRL scale, uh, dealing with ideas that are pretty far advanced along and ready to be applied. Uh, what we've done here in the Center for Detectors is we've tried to uh, expand our operations at RIT to include more basic ideas or ideas that aren't quite as developed. And so we're trying to take ideas that seem like they're pretty good, they've been proven maybe at the uh, smallest levels, and then we're taking them and advancing them, developing them so that they can be deployed for future projects and missions.